Hello, hello. All right. I am doing my usual and sharing this live. Guys, I know it's been a while, but I've been working on some of my self-care and when I'm not energetically in a place that feels really good, it's hard for me to do these lives because I feel like um, I feel like I can never get my makeup right. That's what I feel like. <laughs> Hi, thanks for joining. Um, energetically, if I'm not in a good place, I usually won't go live. So that's kind of where I've been admitting to you guys. I just want to be transparent. What time is it? It's pretty late for East Coast. <sighs> okay, live shared. Okay, cool. If you're coming on, say hi. Remember, I love when this is interactive, guys, and it's been a while since I have um, been live. What is going on over here? <laughs> yeah, I just had to throw my hair back. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, cool. So let me just like, I'm just like having the hardest time with lighting all the time. Um, and also, I've been thinking about a new business plan. Hold on, let me take a sip of my coffee. Um, where I think, um, yay, thanks guys, thanks for the hearts and likes, where I think I will um, go live. Well, first of all, I'm thinking of expanding my YouTube channel and really focusing on videos there and putting some quality content there. And then I'm thinking of um, just going live for readings and I'm thinking of taking my readings to Facebook Live. Yes, you've heard it here first. So I'm thinking about doing that, so stay tuned. Hi! Thanks for joining, Dennis. I don't know you, Dennis, so you must be new. Um, okay, cool. So let me go ahead and introduce myself if you are new. My name is Justine Leslie. I'm a spiritual life coach. I um, help people help heal themselves. Um, I do this through um, Eastern philosophy, spirituality, intuition, um, and uh, universal law. And I do this so we can live a life of truth and freedom. And I also deal a lot with um, spiritual awakening and empath support. If you're an empath, who's somebody that feels energy very deeply, you may want to watch a lot of my videos. I concentrate a lot of my lives on that. And um, I understand how it's hard to live in a world like this. So um, when you have extreme sensitivities, so check out some of my lives for some help um, in that area of how to manage it. So, all right, so let me just move on to today's topic. Let me just take some water first. I'm sorry, not water, coffee. I've actually been, um, <laughs> I've been thinking about this topic lately. Um, the word reality. So if you guys have been following me, you'll understand that I'm in Cambodia. And yesterday I had a uh, energy healing session with a center that is pretty well known for their energy healing. And I did um, a Know Your Karma test um, and energy healing um, about which, um, which chakras are uh, not exactly aligned. Um, turns out my bottom half is, is kind of all over the place. And I received a healing yesterday to kind of align those back, um, which was great. I do feel a little bit of a difference. Um, but... Um, I was also able to speak a lot with the energy healer and ask her a few questions and um, it just like made me really think about um, reality and what reality actually is. So let me kind of explain this to you guys and why I'm questioning this and why I want to talk about it today. When I first went through my spiritual awakening, I went through an extreme like literally on off consciousness period, meaning I went to bed one way and I woke up the next day with a complete different consciousness of the world. All of a sudden there was self-actualization. I started asking my question, myself the hard questions. Um, who am I? What am I supposed to do on this planet? What, what the heck just happened to me? 
what have I been doing with my life? Really all the hard questions started coming because I really truly feel like a switch in my brain just went off like a light bulb, like a light switch. And um, I went from no consciousness to consciousness in what seems like a day, but when I really look back at it, it's kind of like it was always meant to happen, right? Like everything was leading up to it. So for me, once I learned all of this and I figured out what my reality was, like I wasn't living in a reality, I was like, oh my God, like my whole life is fake. Like I feel like my life is fake. And that, that happened to me when I was 27 and 31 now. And I just remember having that thought, like it was really depressing because to think back at your life and see it as a lie and not, you're not living in reality was really, really hard. There was a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, um, a lot of negative feelings that came along with it. And, um, you know, you're knowing what you know now, like, right, as an enlightened being or, you know, somebody after a spiritual awakening, somebody awoke, right? You think about it and you're like, oh my God, this is crazy. But what is, like, what is actually true is I was not living in my reality. So where am I going with this? Basically what I'm trying to say is that reality, and let me define it for you, which I define it as is, and I wrote this down so I can get this right. Reality is the lens in which you perceive the world. Let me repeat. Reality is the lens in which we see the world. So again, this is another topic that's not a good or bad and it's not a right or wrong. It's actually just a perception, so it's an area of gray. So your reality is whatever you are perceiving the world as. So technically, I wasn't living in a false reality. I was living in my reality at that time, which was, if I can look back at it now, a very, very unconscious state of being. So do other people live that way and perceive things as I did before my spiritual awakening? Absolutely. Does it make them wrong? Absolutely not. And that's what we need to understand because I do a lot of these teachings from this new perception of reality, which is after my spiritual awakening, I talk about my awakening a lot and um, I preach, I teach, and I help people heal from my perception of reality. Does it make it true? Does it make it right? It makes it true because it's true to me. And that's what I'll get into in a little in a little bit about how to figure out what your reality is. So I'm actually teaching, preaching from my reality. And some people get it because they're operating on the same frequency as me, meaning that they have the same perception. And then some people don't, which makes a lot of sense because the people that do follow me, watch these videos, um, sign up for my, my newsletter, all of these things, we're on the same um, we're vibrating on the same frequency, AKA we have the same reality. That is our reality. And my basic principle of my reality is one thing, that we're either living from love or we're living from fear. But everybody that's woke, everybody that has their reality don't necessarily operate from that version. And um, last week I did a, um, a live about the Kanye West thing and not to bring it up again, but that is another way of um, looking at someone, Kanye West, who lives in his own reality. And it's not right, it's not wrong, it's not bad, it's not good. It's literally just his perspective and his reality and it's our business to um, be responsible for not judging other people's reality. Now, when I first went through my awakening, I thought that was the reality. Like I was like, oh my God, like I said before, like I was living in the world, like in a false, false reality. But is there ever really a false reality if it's actually happening at that moment? Hopefully that makes sense. There really isn't any, um, if you guys are following, let me know. <laughs> um, because there, you know, when I first went through the awakening, I, I really just thought it was like a right or wrong. And, and when I say things about um, being woke, staying woke, I have a tattoo that says stay woke. Um, what I really mean is to be awake and to be aware and to be conscious of your own reality. And sometimes you look at people and um, you think they live in like a pretty crazy reality, right? Like, and, and first thing that comes to mind for me is politics, right? Because I, you know, a lot of liberals and progressives, which is what I am, we look at things through a lens that we all have similar ideas about being the way, 
right, the path. But it's not always necessarily true for other people and we really, really need to understand that because our version or lens of, of reality is not any different, is not any better. It is different. It's not any better than anybody else's version, right? So it's really, really important to take responsibility that we all have different perspectives and respect perspectives and respect it. That's really what it's, what it's all about. So does that make sense to anybody? So, so true. Okay, that makes sense to somebody. Good, good. <laughs> and we are, Melinda, probably living in the same reality, right? Because we resonate with a lot of stuff that we talk about and that's totally cool, but it doesn't make our reality any better than anyone else's, right? So, um with reality, right? So, I'm talking about what it is, what it's not, um, et cetera, et cetera. But now I wanna talk about how we figure out our reality. So in my situation, again, mine was something that was kind of um, forced, um, I hate using that word forced, but it was kind of brought upon me why my spiritual awakening. But there are other ways to figure out what your reality is. And when I say your reality, I semi mean truth, right? Because truth works the same way. Your truth may be different from my truth, but it doesn't necessarily make one right and one the the, the other one wrong, right? It's it's pretty much aligned with reality, right? So um, as far as what you're figuring out, um, you know what um, what's reality and what's not. I've put together like a few things. Um, to be able to help you figure out what it is, um, what, what's your reality, do you vibe with other people under this reality, that type of thing, personal truths, yes. Okay, so first thing is reality can really be seen by um, consciousness, right? And when I say consciousness, what I really mean is awareness, right? It's just another word. So in my case, I woke up one day and all of a sudden it was there. It was there from um, extreme trauma, and a spiritual awakening and what I believe I had was a kundalini and I woke up with consciousness which is an awareness of what my life is, who I am, etc, etc. Um, really a process of self-actualization. So um, there are other ways instead of this extreme way of a spiritual awakening to really, um, really, really see consciousness. So I put together a few things. So first thing to figure out um, you know, what reality you're living in, um, question really everything, right? So for me, when I look back at what my reality was, I didn't question anything at the, for the most part. I just took things as it was. I was taught one way, I went with it. Um, you know, I grew up one way, I went with it. Um, whatever was in my perception at the time, the life I was living in suburbia, um, I took what I saw and what I experienced as is without asking any questions. I believe that if I did that earlier on in my life, the spiritual awakening wouldn't have been a such a shock to me because I would have already had some type of consciousness and some realization of my reality already. So I always say question everything because you really just don't know. It is so important to be a curious person. You must, must question everything instead of just, hi, thanks for joining. Um, instead of just going with the flow, right? Because that's, we don't need mindless, we need mindful, right? So like, it's really, really important to question everything. Everything you're taught to be true because most of the time, we're gonna spend the rest of our lives unlearning what we thought to be true because it doesn't ring true with us. Going on to the second thing, speaking of what's true, find your truth what feels good to you. Now, for people just joining, I'm talking about how to figure out your perception of reality. Um, the first one was question everything, be curious, and this now second one is about finding your truth. Truth and reality are very similar. I always question everything, words, actions, sometimes scare myself of how accurate I am. Good, I think you should. Um, now, as far as truth goes, you know, I said in the beginning why I do what I do I do this because I want people to find freedom, whether that's physical freedom, emotional freedom, whatever type of spiritual freedom, whatever you want to call it. And I also help people find truth. And I mean their truth, which means it could be different for everybody else, but it's, it's your higher, higher, truth is your higher, higher self. And if you know your higher self, you know what reality you live in, right? 
because and I'll give an example like I gave earlier in, in, in this life is you know I operate from my reality of love versus fear I understand that I'm love I don't get it externally I can give it but it'll never leave me right so that's my truth which brings me to my reality so most of the time if you can figure out your truth you can figure out what what, what uh, reality that you're living in so really comes down to because a lot of people ask me this well how do I find my truth you find your truth by f by following what feels good your truth will always lie at that end of that rainbow I guarantee it so what you need to do and this is why it's so 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 important to do what feels good because at the end of that rainbow <laughs> I love how I'm describing it this way but at the end of that rainbow you will find your truth because the truth feels good it will never feel negative and that's really important to understand um, and also the truth is, is, excuse me, the truth and what feels good also is linked to intuition and your intuition is literally a channel from the divine, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it. And it's guiding us. It's our inner guidance for our entire life as you know, here on the human planet, right? So, um, do what feels good and you will find your way. You will find your truth. You will find your perspective. You will find your reality. Okay. The third thing make a list of what you believe in so this is just pretty simple and even if it's like you know really really simple things it doesn't have to be re religious wise um but if you write down what you believe in you can really kind of start um brainstorming um you know what type of reality that you live in um because a lot of what your beliefs are really are linked to your truths as well so this is like a really good exercise to kind of just write it all down, get it all out, and then take a look at it. Not people like the truth. Not everyone accepts what is real. Right. I agree. I agree. Um, let me take a sip of my coffee and think about that for a second. That many people like the truth. Not everyone accepts what is real. I agree. I agree. I think the denial of the truth for a lot of people can make people sick. Um, and not accepting what reality is can make them sick too, which is why I think it's really, really important that we respect and accept other people's realities, which is what I was saying in the beginning, because it is not our business or our purpose in life to, um, to tell other people what to do, right? And it's really funny because I always hesitated and I've, you know, if you've been watching me for a while, I've, I've hesitated on what to call myself, right? And I finally have um, settled on spiritual life coach, but I really, really dislike the word life coach because when people hear it, they think somebody's trying to tell them how to live their life. That's the last thing that I'm trying to do. <laughs> That is the last thing that I'm trying to do. I have I have a few passions and purposes on being on this earth as to what my gifts are and what I'm here to do. And one of them is to spread consciousness. Um, and that is the exact opposite of telling somebody what to do. Because we all know that many people get sick because they are forced with fake truths. You can't let people tell you who and what you are. Exactly, exactly. So um, I just lost my train of thought. No, I really like that. Oh, it's so freaking true. Um, yeah, so the last, so what I'm here to do is to spread consciousness. But the last way that you do that is telling other people what to do. You don't, that's not, you don't force change. Anything that's forced, and if you, this comes down to universal law, anything that's forced is not meant to be, and everything is flow. If you're in a situation where you're forcing something, it's not meant to be. I'll tell you that right now. That's jobs, that's relationships, that's friendships, that's family, that's skills, that's whatever it is. If it's not meant to be, if it's if it has to be forced, it's not meant to be. The universe responds in flow. And when you're in flow, when things are not easy, but more simple, I like that word simple, then you know that you're on the right path. And that's something to really remember. If you're kind of constantly forcing a job, I remember being in my corporate job, I would, and, and wrong major, misaligned major right in in college I would f try so so hard 
to try to um, succeed at something that um, I was forcing. And it obviously turned out to not be the right major, my career move for me, which I found out later by listening to my intuition. But anyway, forcing, so yeah, not an aligned path for you. Um, it's universal law, so just pay attention to that as well. So yeah, sorry, so I went off on a tangent. Okay, let me finish the last one, guys. Um, so for the people that are just joining, I'm making a list of um, ways to um, really, um, what's the word for it, uh, to, to figure out your reality, right? Um, as opposed to having, you know, a massive spiritual awakening like I did, where I figured out my reality, but um, these are just simple ways to kind of um, kind of rev it up and figure it out. Um, so the last one is, and I mentioned it earlier, is practice mindfulness. So hold on, let me just take a sip of my coffee, guys. <laughs> I love my coffee. Um, practice mindfulness. I just try to meditate before. I used to be a heavy meditator. It kind of, throughout my life, it, it slips away, comes back. Um, I'm trying to get back into it. It was very, very hard before. I'm feeling kind of anxious. Probably shouldn't be drinking this coffee, but it is what it is. But, um, you know, it's really important, even if you can't do it in meditation, is to be very mindful throughout the day. I love my coffee. Me too. <sighs> me too. I don't know. It makes me so anxious though. And this is like my, maybe like my second or third cup today. And, and by the way, guys, I know it's late for you guys, but it's early for me. But um, if you're East Coast, it's late for you guys. But um, yeah, just practicing mindfulness. Even like um, I used to work in a restaurant and I used to like scarf down my food. Like I didn't even know what I was eating. I just like ate it so fast. Like I had no mindfulness when I was eating. Like you can practice mindfulness during small tasks while you're in the shower. You know, watch as the soap like hits your skin. Um, not watch, sorry, pay attention basically. Like really be present to it, right? Be present to um, what you're really doing. Pay attention, morning coffee. I know it's bad in the evening, yeah. And just pay attention to the present basically. That's what mindful is, being mindful is. Um, and when you're in the present, anything can happen, right? Anything can happen. Um, which is why I'm, um, love tea, Frankie. What about tea? I know. Oh my God. I know. I have to get back into tea. I know. You're right. Oh my God. You guys are so right. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, being in the presence can really, really help you be conscious of what, um, be conscious, be aware um, of what exactly you stand for and um, what exactly um, you believe in. And all of these things can lead to what your reality is. And um, hopefully that helps. So basically how I wanna sum this up, and I feel like I was rambling a little bit, but I think you guys understand what I mean about reality. Because I always, you know, it's, some people think you're being, I've been accused of being pretentious before, right? Where I say, um, you know, wake up, you're not living in reality, etc., etc. But in truth, these people are living in reality, right? They're living in their own reality. And who am I to come along and say, snap out of it, uh, that's not true, um, etc., etc. Just because it's not true to me doesn't mean it's not true to them. Because people are doing things and acting from a place of what they feel is true, whether that's actually true to them or not at the time. If they think it's true or they feel it's true and maybe it's not really their truth, like myself before my spiritual awakening, I thought it was my truth to go to school for digital marketing and work in corporate for the rest of my life. I believe that was my truth. There was no stopping me. I went to college. I didn't care how I got the money. I did it. And guess what? I did it. I finished grad school. I did everything I said I was going to do. And then... It happened, right, where I realized I was not sitting in my truth, right? I was not acting for my truth. So, um, malignant narcissist. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, narcissist. I haven't done anything on narcissist in a while. But anyway, that was my truth at the time before my spiritual awakening. There's nobody that could have come along and told me, hey, Justine, this is not the path for you. What are you doing? I wouldn't have listened to them because I actually, if I can recall, People have told me that, but it doesn't matter because I actually believed it from coming from my mind that it is true. Now, 
It is not our responsibility to change people's reality. It is our responsibility to practice our own reality and be the light that other people um, can see, right? And that's what it comes down to. If you resonate with the word light worker, this is what your business is, right? It's not to come into other people's lives that don't ask for it and tell them what their reality is. That's the absolute truth because the last thing, people will not change. <laughs> if you make them change. And that's important to really understand. People change by example. So all you have to do is make sure your truth, your reality is on point. Make sure you can look at yourself in the mirror every day. Make sure you know that um, you know, you're know you being mindful, being present, know the truth, live the truth, you are authentic, you're doing your thing. All you have to do is be the light. And that encompasses all of being the light, right? Because there's nothing else that you can do to change other people's realities. All we can do is be the light, be in our own realities, be in our own lane, follow the tribe, right? You guys are my tribe if you're watching this and you, want, and you really resonate with what I'm saying because we, like I said, vibrate and come from the same perspective in life. Um, and just stick with those people but really also understand that there is just other people with other realities and it's our responsibility to respect it. One of the biggest lessons I've ever learned is that people have their own truths and even when that truth is killing them, they need their truth and cling tightly to it. Yes, let them cling, right? It might be hard to watch them cling and it might be hard to see somebody, um, you know, for example, for me, I know that material things are not really reality, um, you know, I don't buy really nice clothes, I don't buy really nice cars, I don't really care so much about that, but when you see another person who cares so much about that, you know in your head, oh my God, this is not reality. They're clinging to things that are not reality. They're never going to understand your version of reality, ever. You can preach them all you want, they are not going to understand it. So you need to step back, be your authentic self, be in your own light, and let other people live their own realities the way that they are choosing to at the time. You are not responsible to interfere on their path to a new reality, right? Which, you know, if usually, and I say this usually, <laughs> people that value things over, um, over people or um, whatever it is, who value things, usually get the message. They may not get it today, they may not get it the day on their deathbed, they may not even get it in this lifetime, but it's usually a lesson that they will learn eventually. So, it is not our responsibility to interfere with their consciousness, right? Nobody ever does, my truth is too truthful, nobody likes it. <laughs> it is not our responsibility to interfere on other people's paths. Maybe they're not supposed to get to that reality, who knows? Anyway, I think you guys get what I'm saying, right? And it's a lesson for me too. Because I sat there with my energy healer yesterday and I said, well, how do I get people to see reality? And then she's like, well, what is reality? And then I had to explain it to her and then she said, okay, well, that's your reality, right? And that's where you're living. That's where all your values come from. Uh, that's where your beliefs come from, your truths, etc., etc. So stay in your own lane, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Respect other people as much as you can and then find your tribe, right? Find the people that actually resonate with you. I find fake people so disinteresting. Yeah. <laughs> I love that, Ella. It's so funny. Yes, we cannot interrupt people's karma. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I love that. Cool. All right, guys. I um, actually, I should do something about karma this week because I'm learning a lot over here in Cambodia. So it's actually funny because my energy healer yesterday was talking about karma. And um, we kept talking about like... Um, like if your soul evolves to like the, the highest of the high, like you don't evolve again, you become like a um, an ascended master or an angel. And like we were talking about like, how do you get to that point, right? Like how do you get, like how do you know that, um, you know, you're at your, your, your perfected um, enlightenment, you know what I mean? It was actually very interesting. I don't know the answer to that, but I gotta do my research. But Okay, because I'm like trying to not come back, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm trying to not come back. Like I don't want to come back. Like I want to graduate, you know what I mean? Like I want to graduate 
you know, I wanted to do all of my lessons. I don't know what I'm asking for right now, but I would like to, uh, you know, learn all of my lessons and, and hopefully not reincarnate, right? Like I want to graduate to like a soul guide or um, an angel or ascended master. That would be nice. Oh my God, so if I'm cold, do you work with your healer one-on-one? -on -one? I think my vibration is too strong. I don't think so, Ella. <laughs> All right, guys, cool. I will, um, thanks for joining. I know, like, the reality talk is, like, a little out there. I want to graduate, too. I'm good on all this. Right? Like, <laughs> like, who wants to be a human, right? Like, let me just take a sip of this. Like, I'm pretty done being a human, I think. <laughs> but I guess I don't get to decide that. So, um, I will be in tomorrow. Sorry for the hiatus, guys. But it was so nice seeing you guys again. And I got to get on with my day. But... Um, I know I gotta look more into reincarnation. Actually, I, I know exactly where to look. I know exactly where to look. Anyway, talking to myself. All right. Um, okay, cool. I will see you guys tomorrow and thanks for the chat. I love when it's interactive. You guys are my tribe. Love you guys. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye guys.